All right, while working on my uh, Tektronix uh, curve tracer, uh, I was troubleshooting some parts of the power supply, and I ran across a circuit that I thought was interesting. I had, I had to try to figure out how it worked myself, so I thought it would be a good uh, teaching exercise to, uh, to go through it. So this is, uh, this is kind of the power supply, there's a bridge rectifier, uh, there's a differential pair, this is like an op amp thing, and it does a bunch of things. And uh, this particular part of the circuit outputted a voltage, and uh, this is uh, this part of it was basically the voltage regulator. So, so let's uh, let's zoom in on that. So, uh, yeah. So I had to go through this thing and and scroll a bunch of numbers down and do some calculations and stuff. So, so that's what we're going to do today. So here's the circuit. I've I've simplified it. I've removed everything that's not needed as part of the circuit. So. Is that all in a frame now? Yeah, I think that's good. So there's a voltage that comes into the top. We can just consider it plus 12 volts coming on the top. There's 12 and a half volts here. Just some voltage comes in the top. Um, and uh, there is a pass transistor. As it turns out, this one is a TO66. If people aren't familiar with those, they, they are the transistors that look, that look kind of like this. And you say, oh, that's a TO3. I know what those are. It's a big metal can and it has a big, a big lid on it and stuff. Um, well, there's, there's TO3s, okay, so uh, TO3, which are the big ones. TO66 is like a TO3 shrunk down about 60%. Um, and so it looks just like it, but it's smaller. But it, it, it is a heavy duty, uh, heavy duty transistor. And uh, this one is on, actually on the back of the instrument. It's actually quite nice. It's on a, uh, a socket. You can just unbolt it and pu pull it out. You can change these without even opening up the instrument. So it's, it's a real nice design. And it goes on the big heat sink on the back of the instrument. But anyway, uh, yeah, so there's that transistor that's, that's the pass transistor. And it says plus five is supposed to come out, plus five volts. And then it's got these other transistors, and it's got a diode here, and I go, oh, well, that must be the Zener diode, and this must regulate it somehow. So I started uh, diving into it. So let's, uh, let's go one step further here. And uh, so this is really the basics of what we need to know. And as it turns out, uh, this diode is not a Zener. It's just a regular, like, a 1N4000 series diode. Um, so that one, that, one really doesn't, that one really doesn't do much. And yeah, there's a little capacitor here in the output, 39 microfarad, fine. Um, this is a 1.5 ohm resistor, okay? And so we can just basically think of that as a short. So that's not there. Uh, this one's not there. This, this just bleeds it down when it's, when it's off. So really, we can kind of get rid of that thing. Um, and so the most basic schematic then would be this one, okay? So this is kind of what it all boils down to. So how does this thing regulate voltage? It looks like it can't. Um, so um, if we look at this one, this is the pass transistor. So the current's going to be flowing in, in this direction, which means that uh, this has to be, in order for the current to flow, this has to be high. And how does this get high? Well, it gets high with this 470 ohm resistor tied up to plus 12 and a half. So this can turn it on. Well, what can turn it off? Well, this guy can turn it off. He can pull it down. So now you can see it normally wants to be on, but this thing can turn it off, okay? And so what does it take to turn it off? Well, the emitter is grounded, so it really only takes 0.6 volts to start turning this transistor on. So the steady state of this thing would be that there's 0.6 volts here and 5 volts here. Well, how, how would that work? Okay, so let's do some calculations here, okay? Um, what we're really interested in is this, is this right here, okay? So let me, let me redraw it over here. We're going to have a voltage divider, okay? And this is minus 12 and a half. And this is going to be right in the middle. It's going to be 0.6 volts. We want to know when does 0.6 volts happen, okay? And we have 4.32K, and we have 13.7K, okay? And then you can go, well, uh, I'm not used to thinking of this is our variable, okay? We want to know what plus V is. This is our variable. Well, I'm not really used to doing it that way. If... 
if it were ground here, then I know that I can just do this and that'll give me a ratio, okay? So let's, uh, this is how kind of I think, okay? Let me, let me redraw it. We're gonna have this. Now I'm gonna make this ground, okay? And how do I make that ground? Well, I'm gonna have to add 12 and a half volts, okay? If I wanna change this into that, I have subtracted 12 and a half volts. And I'm gonna have to do the same thing for this 0.6 volts. I'm gonna have to subtract, okay, or add. This is minus 12 and a half, so I added 12 and a half. So we're gonna have to add 12 and a half here. So we have uh, 12 and a half and 0.6, okay, so we have 13.1. So now this is 13.1. Uh, let's see, am I doing this right? 13.1. Okay. And um, we want to know what, what, the, what the voltage is here, okay? So we know that if we have a ratio, okay, we're going to have 13.7 divided by 13.7 plus 4.32, okay? That ratio is this voltage. Um, times V, okay? This is going to be 13.1, okay? Did you see how I did that? Um, we're going to have the total resistance is in the denominator, and then this portion of the resistance here is our numerator, so that's gonna be our fraction, this to that, okay? This to that, and uh, that fraction times this voltage is going to be 13.1. So this is the equation that we want to uh, that we want to solve. All right, and we don't need to put in the k's here. Right? We could put in k, 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 but it really wouldn't matter. The the uh, ratio is going to be the same. So we'll have 13.7 and 4.32. Add those, divide those. So our ratio is point. 7, 6. So we're going to have 76% of whatever V is, okay? 0.67 V. All right. And so if we want to know what V is, then we take 13.1 and we divide it by 0.76. 13.1 uh, and we get uh, V equals 17.23. Okay. So this would be 17.23. And so that would solve this equation. 17.23 times 0.76 gives us 13.1, all right? And then we want to, now we want to go this direction. We want to take our, our thing and we want to move it back this direction. So we're going to have to subtract 12 and a half from everything. We subtract 12 and a half, we get zero. Uh, we take zero, we subtract 12 and a half, we get minus 12 and a half. We take 13.1, we subtract 12 and a half, we get 0. 0.6. And we take 17.23 and we subtract 12.5 and we get four point, uh, where are we here? We get 4.73 volts, okay? And so that's how this thing works. Uh, it's gonna regulate it to 4.73 volts. Um, now they wanted five volts, so maybe different values would have been better, but these are the values that they had. And maybe uh, 0.6 volts isn't exactly correct. Uh, it'll be temperature, temperature dependent stuff. And, um, but it will regulate it to about five volts. Okay. So that's how it does it. It takes the output voltage and divides it down to be about 0.6 volts. And then that starts turning on this transistor, which turns off this one. So if this voltage gets too high, it starts turning on this transistor and pulls this down and starts turning this one off. If this is too low, this stops conducting and then this one will start turning on and it'll go up and that's our balancing that's that's how this voltage regulator works okay what about that what about that thing that was in the middle there this thing why was it there what was it doing in the circuit okay so we have to do a different calculation for this one all right so why is this in there and remember we forgot about this 1.5 ohms why was that 1.5 ohms there well you have the same type of situation at about 0.6 volts, this transistor starts to turn on. So if we have one and a half ohms and we have 0.6 volts across it, okay, we have 0.6 divided by 1.5 equals, set off this camera, uh, 0 0.6, 1.5. We have 400 
milliamps. Okay, did I do that right? Is that exactly 400? <laughs> 1.5, yeah, I guess it is. So 400 milliamps. So when you have 400 milliamps going through this resistor, you start generating 0.6 volts. If you have more than 400 milliamps, then this will go bigger than 0.6 volts, which means this transistor will start to turn on and it'll pull this down and it does the same thing as this. It's gonna turn off this transistor. So this transistor turns this guy off if the voltage is too high. This transistor turns this off if the current is too high. And so this is a, a current protection. Anyway, it's a cute little circuit. Um, why is there a diode here? Just to make sure this never goes positive um, with respect to ground. Um, I mean, negative with respect to ground, I'm sorry. Um, so only positive voltages can come out. If, if this node ever goes negative, this will conduct. It's just to protect the circuit and power up conditions and stuff. And then what is the 110 ohm resistor? Well, that just turns off the five volts. When you turn off the instrument, it bleeds down the, the, the five volts and, and makes it into a ground condition so the thing will start up correctly and you won't have any voltage spikes or anything like that. So anyway, um, today we would probably just put in a five, uh, a five volt three terminal regulator um, and just call it quits. But uh, they uh, were designing with discrete transistors back then, and uh, this is what uh, this is what they did. <laughs>